Hello and welcome to today's podcast. Okay, guys, this one is a pretty exciting episode. We've never done this before. I've had one guest all the time, two guests every once in a while, but today I have four guests for you are. That's right. Four of your favorite experts have returned for our year-end roundtable, and they happen to be four of my favorite people. They are four of my very dear friends. Here in Chicago, we were just saying we wished we were all together in the same room to tape this. But we are all on Zoom for those of you who are watching this on the video. But let me introduce you guys to, you know them all. They're near and dear to your hearts as they are to mine. We have rock star divorce attorney to the stars, I'll say, um, Beth McCormick. We have America's favorite dating expert, Bella Gandhi. We have my go-to mental health expert, poor Jenny, gets called in anytime anything happens in the world that I need a mental health take on, Jenny Stevens, and one of the country's top divorce financial um, experts, we have Heather Locust joining us. So hi, ladies. Thank you for coming. Hi. It's so good to be here. I have to tell you, I'm I'm super excited to do this episode. For my listeners, I'm going to be honest with you all. I kind of came up with the idea so I get to hang out for an hour with four of my favorite people. But the other thing that I know about these ladies is they are some of your favorite guests and they happen to truly be some of the top experts in the field of divorce in the country. They just all happen to be my friends who are in my backyard as well. So I'm very lucky and you're very lucky. And they come, as you heard, from all different areas of the divorce support arena. We have Beth, who's our our legal expert. We have Bella, who is our love expert, um, our beyond expert, I like to call it. We have Jenny, who is our mental health expert. And we have Heather, who's our financial expert, specifically on divorce as well. So what I asked the ladies to do, so that you all know, As I ask them, I want this to be some hope and inspiration for all of you who are out there. My past two episodes have been focused on how to start a divorce because we know statistically in December, people are getting through the holidays, but have it kind of in the back of their mind that they may have divorce in their future because we know that January, we call it divorce month for a reason. So this episode, rather than focusing on how to get it started, I kind of want to focus on the three stages for those of you who are thinking about it, those of you who are going through it, and best of all, those of you who are in your beyond and ready to go forward into this new year. So we're going to go around. That's why it's a round table. We're going to go around and I'm going to get some tips from all my friends to help you and give you a little inspiration. So let's start out with you, Beth, because you are my, well, because you are my compatriot in the legal field. And we know the reason they call it divorce month in January is that traditionally our phones start ringing right? I mean, they call the day, the month, what is it? The, the Tuesday or the Monday after new year's is divorce day. So, you know, what are your thoughts to anyone who's out there right now? Who's, who's thinking of picking up that phone on January, what second? It's it's interesting. uh, My experience really is that February is the crazy month because the bills have all come due and, uh, um, all the expense of the holidays is um, the reality bites. And so that's when we get a lot of calls. But for sure, in January, I would say um, pat yourself on the back. You made it through another holiday season. You're able to breathe again. And if you have the courage to make the call, I think the biggest thing to always remember is um, who you're talking to and why. Because all too often, I'm fielding a lot of emotions. So I bring in people like Jenny Stevens to coach them on the emotions so that they come to me, I say, packaged up with a bow and ready to really be in the headspace to hear the legal advice. I sometimes just listen to people initially because I realize they're not going to hear what I have to say anyway. So just listen and set up another time for them to be in a place where they can receive any advice I give. But if they have had the benefit of some good therapy and coaching, 
then um, just come prepared to listen, have a notebook with you always or wherever you keep notes and um, just come with a, a open mind and open heart because all too often I think people come with the mindset of they already know what they want and then they want to understand how the lawyer is going to help them get it. And uh, that sometimes makes it challenging because I'm the bearer of a lot of bad news. I know Bella in the dating world, I feel like you're you're stuck with that sometimes too, because people have in their mind the way it's supposed to be. And when it's not really that good for them, we have to say the bad or the hard things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bella's like, uh, amen and hallelujah. Cause we right. know that a lot of what you say, and actually let's, let's go to you, Bella, because I, one thing that maybe someone who's sitting in that space that Beth was just talking about and this will seem so far away for them. They'll be like, what could Bella be possibly have to say for me? I'm not, I'm never dating again. Right. Um, but in fact, 75% of your clients, I think, are people who have been through divorce. And so maybe you have some perspective there for them. Yeah. You know, sometimes it feels like, oh God, I don't know if I ever want to do this again when we come out of divorce. And a lot of my clients have come through that tunnel and they're in the beyond phase. But something that's interesting, Beth and Susan were just talking, you guys were talking about January being divorce month. So in case you're thinking about dipping your toe into the pool, dear listener, January is also the biggest dating month of 2023. It's like we either want to get out of what we're in or we want to get into something else, it sounds like. So, so much so that Sunday, January 8th, is predicted to be the busiest online dating date of 2023. And what are the drivers? Probably the same drivers for divorce, right? New year, new me, like for divorce, I don't ever want to have another holiday with this person again. And for dating, it might be, you know what? I've had enough holidays to myself, or I'd really like the next holiday to be with somebody special. So it drives people into the dating market so much so that it starts December 26th. And the data show that online app memberships spike 50 to 80%. So Get yourself into the right mindset, no matter where you are in this process, whether you're in the before, the during, or the after of what I call being psychotically optimistic. <laughs> and that is not being toxically positive. There's a big difference, right? Psychotically optimistic means you believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that the lid to your pot is out there. And the psychotic part means, look, even if it's the Sahara desert and you're getting no hits online, or you've just had your heart broken and you feel like, oh my gosh, it's never going to be out there for me. I can't find anybody as good as that person. You stay optimistic, even in those odds that, yep, the lid to my pot is still out there. I love that. And I want to say this episode drops on December 26th. So yeah. everybody who's listening out there right now know that peak dating season just started. The bell went off, everyone. Bella has an awesome episode on peak dating season that came out on her podcast, the Smart Dating Podcast, um, that I think came out on the 19th of December, right, Bella? That's right. That's okay. right. So go back and listen to that one. We also have a couple of episodes with Bella in the archive of Divorce and Beyond that are also talking about peak dating season. So we'll get into more of that dating. But I also want to touch on Jenny, what, what Beth said, because many people think that Beth should be the first person that you call, right? You call the divorce attorney first. But one of the things I've often said to people, and you and I have talked about this in podcast episodes, is sometimes a mental health expert or a coach might be a better place to start if you are starting your journey into divorce to help with all that emotional content. Beth even said, sometimes people aren't even really able to hear what she needs to be able to tell them. So what would you say? So um, the hardest thing about going through divorce is, in my, like, is making that attorney phone call. I know when I got my divorce, calling it happens to be somebody that, that we all know well. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then it's not dissimilar to therapy. Calling a therapist and walking into my office or walking into a, a therapist's office can be the toughest part. So once you've made the call and walked into that person's office, it's like, that's the most important and actually the hardest piece because 
you've called somebody, you've shared that you're vulnerable, you're admitting and saying, I'm in pain and I want help. One of the hardest things we can do in life is admit I'm in pain and I'm suffering and I need help. Okay. So if we can accept that and then like receive that help, which is a whole nother episode about how to receive the support and love, then you've got that going for you. So it's not only important, but it's like some of it goes hand in hand. I mean, Beth will, Beth will say, you know, oh, you need a coach or a therapist and that person may or may not be able to, or want to do that. Right. Everything we do is a choice. Every single day, every single minute, every single hour, we have a choice to decide how we want to spend, whether it's this, you know, Susan, you mentioned, is it, do I want to spend this last holiday with this person or do I not want to be alone anymore? And it's my, one of the things that I think I, or I attempt to do well is I ask people and interrogate people's beliefs all the time. Like, what do you really want? What is the story you're telling yourself right now currently? And you can create any change you want, as long as you decide and have intentionality around it. Many, many people think we can't change. I don't fundamentally believe that people can totally change. I truly believe that we can create change. Those are two vastly different things. I can create change. You can create change. My, you know, my, the person I was married to wasn't going to change. I, I'm not going to change, but we can create changes, whether that's through a divorce or a separation or a new love relationship or building more wealth, et cetera. Did I, and did I answer your question? Susan? I think, yeah, I think you did. I mean, I think that the question is for people as they sit there in that space, right? They're, they're in that, oh my God, I have this mountain ahead of me, right? Yeah. Like, I know this isn't where I want my relationship to be. I know that major change is coming. And, you know, one of the things I, I always encourage people to do is to reach out, as you just said, for that helping hand and find that support that you need. Um, I, just, Susan, I don't want to cut you off because I was like, I think I might've gone off on the train because I get wildly passionate about this topic. <laughs> to answer your question, Susan, is that people have to decide, right? Each And like, I think this is a month to decide, right? And people say, we haven't hung all day long about things. And I say, get out of your head and decide. Make it not, it's not a declaration, make a proclamation that I either want to live, stay in this marriage or not or whatnot. So we get to decide. Yeah. We get to decide and we get to reach out for help. I mean, I think that's truly one of the key people think you reach out to a divorce attorney for help. You reach out to a divorce attorney for information. You reach out for emotional support and someone to help you create that change, that plan for change that you were talking about, Jenny, you can reach out to a coach. You can reach out to a mental health expert like you. And then Heather, we know one of the biggest, scariest things for people as they go into divorce is their pocketbook, right? If there's, I mean, people have so much fear around divorce, but fear about the financial side is huge. What do you tell people looking up that mountain? Yeah, to breathe, take one step at a time. It's interesting as you were talking about, I uh, pulled out like the bookmark for my webinar, which I have on our website. But I start with the, the top five strategies for a financial responsible divorce. And number one is exactly what Jenny said. Know what you really, 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 really want. Um, you know, as Beth said, it's like in divorce, you're lucky to get the top couple of things you want. Um, so to have clarity on what's most important to you and to think about what's most important to your spouse and why. And then I would also say, start to organize some of your finances if you have access to them. Some people don't have access to their finances and that's okay. Beth and the attorneys will get it. But if you do have access and it's a matter of just slowing down and getting a little more organized, getting a tax return if you can, getting statements if you can, or even just writing down on a piece of paper, anything you know or remember about the finances. Because the more information you can take to the professionals, will make it you know, quicker meetings, more streamlined meetings, more informative meetings that you can process, which ultimately will save you time, money, and energy. And that's gonna get you through the process, having the most assets and again, the most energy and heart left to create the next chapter in general, financial, and then with Bella for the fun dating parts as well. <laughs> and I have to back on Heather's um comments because it's super important that people know that Heather wrote a book and it, it's a, a truly something from her heart that she did from a place of love. But the people who use that book as their roadmap to meet with all the professionals, 
will benefit greatly because she basically gives you cliff notes, like a cheat sheet to go in there and go armed with information on the things you don't know that you don't know. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a true labor of love and maybe Heather could speak to how she came up with it because of her experiences, but I can't say enough how um, transformative that is for the people who use it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the book is, is so well done and, and it's not just about finance, right? There's no. so, it's so much deeper. Hey, she's mm-hmm. holding it up. Yes, and yes, first yes, of all, yes. you, it has a blank cover. Why don't you talk a little bit about the book, Heather, and how people can get it? Yeah. So as Beth said, it was a labor of love that um, many of you had input on because it really is designed to to take all aspects of divorce. And that was because of my unexpected divorce and how shocked I was when I found out I was in the process, even though I was already a partner in a multi-billion dollar investment firm and leader of our women's service team that helped women through divorce. And then when I found out I was getting divorced, as Susan and all of you know, you know, I was holding my financial statements in my purse because of the, the shock and the fatigue. Um, my kids were five and seven at the time. And that just made me so passionate as many of us are since we've been through the process, because realizing how hard it was knowing what we knew and knowing that financially, logically, I knew I'd be okay, but emotionally, I was scared to death, made me really want to make it digestible for people who don't have that financial background. Um, And I just think the number one thing to know is what we talked about, about assembling the right team. And regardless of who you reach out to first, whether it's the mental health professional, whether it's the financial person, whether it's the attorney, it's finding the right fit professionals for you and your family's unique needs. And that's a key point. That's actually, I was going to, to move to the team approach uh and the in the importance of having the right team next because for those people who are in the midst of a divorce i think we all know and we've all seen this either with friends family or in many of our cases clients divorce never goes by unless you're giselle you know in and uh what's his name um we oh, forgot him already well whoever he is uh, but that unless guy. you're those two Divorce takes a long time and every client hits a point where they're like, why is this dragging on? Why can't this be over? And so we know right now there are people who are at the end of their year who are like, I never thought at the end of this year, I'd still be going through this divorce. And I'm just wondering, because I think we've all heard this, what is it that you say to someone who's feeling stuck in that moment? I know one of the things I say is, we might be missing a team member. Mm. Beth, what do you, what do you say? I want to make one comment. Cause I think what's really important for people to understand is there's different ways to get divorced, which Beth can educate us the best on. And when you see things like Tom and Giselle, and it's like, it's done. It's because they were thoughtful on the process and what they communicated and what they filed. And so that's where slowing down with the mental profession, mental health professionals to manage the emotions, working with the attorney and the financial people to get things coordinated, no matter how amicable or how contentious it is, to the extent the, the to the extent you can control that and do that, it's just going to make it better for you and for your kids. And 100%. so much of divorce is acknowledging what you can't control and being really thoughtful and targeted on those few things that you can control. Yeah. Well, and and one of the things that we know, you know, you I mentioned Tom and Giselle, then you mentioned it, is they had a team. If anyone out there doesn't think they had a major team behind both of them, I know so many people who think they just woke up one day, sat down at a table and, and filed their divorce and it was over. You know, that's not how it worked. Um, so we know they had a team and we also know because we worked together in integrative teams that a that a team approach where you have support in all the different areas where you might need it. And that can be different for every divorce. Um, those are the divorces that actually go the, the smoothest, move the quickest because everybody has what they need in that moment. 
Um, and that's why I wanted an interdisciplinary team even on this screen as we talked about this. Um, and, you know, Beth, I know you, you're, Beth is also a collaborative attorney, which is a model that we've talked about on the show that works, you know, based on an integrative team. So, you know, when you have clients who haven't or who are feeling stuck or like the divorce is dragging on, do, do you have, you know, any general advice that you give them, Beth? Well, I think it's what we all alluded to, and that is think of a funnel and all the options of outcomes are pretty wide at the beginning. But as time goes on and we learn about everything, we have to narrow all the options. And it's crucial to have the mental capacity to help make those decisions. And it's overwhelming. So I don't minimize how challenging it is having endured it myself. Um, and I knew obviously legally what to expect. Financially, I'm pretty equipped because I've done this for 30 years. I, I knew where it might land and I didn't have the emotional bandwidth to make decisions all the time because it's too much. So again, perspective was everything and helped me realize how incapacitating it can be. Um, so I'm a firm believer in anyone who's done anything with me in the last 20 years anyway, knows that I don't do any cases without a team for that reason. I stay in my lane, I'm a legal advisor. Without a financial advisor, it's nothing. It, it or it, it, I'll get you divorced, but without all the thought that's required. The best example I gave was a woman came to me having been represented by one of the best attorneys locally. She had an amazing outcome on the surface, but that outcome of thirty thousand dollars a month in support didn't begin to touch her expenses because she owned a home on the lake and. No one really went through the whole plan with her and helped her realize that if she lives somewhere else, she could have all the trips she wanted and she could have a different life. The point being, without a financial advisor, it looked like it was a great deal, but it really wasn't. Wow. And a coach could have helped by asking some of the hard questions. You know, I find that the best um, advice I give is not advice at all, but asking questions, mm -hmm. right? And having it kind of reflect right back on them and, oh gosh, I don't know. So I don't know if I answered the question either. No, but. you absolutely, you did. And and Jenny, I think you, you know, you have something to add. I was going to say um, something that Beth mentioned a second, a few seconds ago is it reminds me of like, what I've learned from you and all of us and other colleagues that we all know in common is like, there are moments that you just have to drop the rope right? At the end, when you say, when you, when Susan asked Beth, Hey, what can you tell your clients? I mean, I feel like I can channel Beth at times. It's like, drop the rope, let go of the things. You got to choose something. No one's happy then of the divorce, by the way, I've been divorced. No one's happy. And one of you smart women told me, Hey, you're not gonna be happy. He's not gonna be happy. And then that's a good divorce. And I was like, what? That's the truth. So like dropping the rope and like letting things go I've learned is also a good tool or like, um, sort of like belief acceptance towards um, as you near at the end of a divorce. The, the other thing is that um, resonates with me is um, we've all said this, but 90, or I mean, I'll say it out loud again, or in my head, I said that 90% of divorce is emotion. So if, if we know that, which is the truth, a power struggle takes two people and so much of divorce is conflict and tension and fighting. And it's truly, I mean, you're the guy, two of you are attorneys. It's like, the amount of money people spend just to fight, it's like someone's gonna have to just say, I give up or I'm, you know, not even if I, I, let, I let it go because I no longer wanna be in that, that struggle. So that's what was resonating with me when Beth said that. Yeah, it, it was, Beth was talking and I was sitting there and she mentioned her own struggle going through divorce. And my divorce was many, many years ago, but, and I was a divorce attorney going through divorce. And I remember at one point arguing over like some, some plates. I, I admitted mm -hmm. everyone out there, right? I, you know, I remember it being the principle of the thing, or I had picked them out and he shouldn't get it. And, and just not being in that right space to be making the decisions. And, and I'm someone who, who does this, 
you know, every day and has done this for 30 plus years as a living that, that time it was probably 15 years. So having the support and the people who can, you know, speak to you plainly can also be very, you know, very helpful in a coach, um, a mental health professional, you know, coaches are, are sort of your accountability partners in a lot of ways. Your financial advisors are your financial partners to tell you something like Beth was just talking about. You got $30,000 a month and guess what? That's not going to cover your expenses, but nobody bothered to look at that. And, you know, a different topic, Bella, but you and I have talked about this on other po podcasts that we've done are the people who are going through this process, running through all these emotions and also dating. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are to those out there, because that's, we know that's one of the big questions we always get when people are going through divorce. When can I date? When can I start dating? What do you, what do you think? So my answer probably differs from the divorce attorney answer, right? So, and we have people that we work with that are separated, that some of them haven't filed their divorce. Some of them are going through the divorce at this point. So from our vantage point, when I know a client has done their work, right? They're kind of through, maybe they haven't gone through the whole divorce journey, but mentally they're divorced and they're in a good place and they've reconciled as much of the anger, the hostility, the bad feelings. They've worked on themselves. They've looked at what their part in it was. And they the thought of dating excites them, not for revenge sake, not yeah. because my partner cheated on me or my partner's already out there, but wow, I really want to do this and I want to do it mindfully and consciously. Then I think from our vantage point, somebody's ostensibly ready to date and put their, put their foot back in to the pool. But what I would say is very much, you know, what you guys have been talking about so wisely about how to embark on the divorce process. As you embark, once you come through the divorce tunnel, you may be like, wow, I want it to be raining men. Hallelujah. Really? Be conscious this time about what it is you want out of a relationship, what you need out of a relationship, because it's probably different because you're a different person after you've emerged from this marriage and this divorce and being super mindful and conscious of how to do that because the dating landscape has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. Yes. I, we actually, we were talking not that long ago when we were all together because the last time I dated was more than 20 years ago. So I've never tried an app or done any of those fun things, but I, I think your point is so important for people, especially from that emotional aspect. Beth and I could talk about, you know, and, and people are usually asking us if they can date because is that going to affect my divorce? Um, but the, the reality for you for you, the person who's listening right now is, you know, we've all on this screen seen people um, who want to feel better because divorce doesn't feel very good. And they, and there's a thought that it will, if I just find someone to fill this space, I'm going to feel better. And so there's, you know, Bella's points, I think, are so eloquent and so on point for what we're talking about is from that emotional aspect, you can be ready to date from day one of your divorce. Emotionally, you could be ready to date in the middle of your divorce. And a lot of people, it's probably going to be somewhere down beyond your divorce. And it has nothing to do from the emotional aspect in many cases with the divorce process. It has to do with you and your capacity to do that work, right? The divorce takes a lot of time and effort. That's what we all do most of our days. So, you know, you may need to bifurcate or just focus on one before you can focus on the other. 100% because when you come out of divorce, to some extent, you're, you're through one tunnel, but that's almost when you're the most vulnerable in the dating pool, right? Because your proverbial, your love cup has been empty for one year, five years, three decades for some yeah, people, decades, right? 20, 30, yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, the first uh -huh. person that looks at your empty mug and is, starts pouring into it with all of the I love yous and the fast and furious things and the gifts and the words of affirmation and the things that we all need as human beings, 
what happens is we can be susceptible to not looking at red flags of who this person actually is. Are they capable of having a good relationship? Are they narcissistic? Are they love bombing me? Like all of these things. So having a coach, having help, having a therapist along this route will certainly prevent you from ending up in that statistic that Beth and Susan, you know far better than I do, right? Whatever 40% of first marriages end in divorce, but the number gets sharply higher when we talk about the second time around, it's 67% and it gets well into the 70s the third time around. So as you're listening to this, I think what we all want not to happen to you is that you fall into those worst statistics again. So really being mindful and conscious and slow and steady about this is your way to go in the dating world, in the dating world, yeah. even though it's peak dating season, you're going to want to like <laughs> shoot out of the gates. Well, guess what, everyone? There's a peak dating season every year. So if this isn't your peak dating season, you can catch on to the next one. And love is non-cyclical. Okay. So just because there's a 50 to 80% spike in memberships. It doesn't mean, well, Valentine's day, it's all flat. It's for the birds. No, that plateau, that peak kind of continues. It doesn't keep growing into Valentine's day. Like the worst that happens is in the summer, online dating numbers dip about 20%, but you're still talking about 118 million unmarried people in this country. And if we assume that 50% of them are dating online at any given time, that's a big pool anytime, guys. There's somebody out there. I'm pretty sure. There's a lid to your pot. There's lots of fish in the sea. And I, I was going to say, Susan, I was going to say, um, I think what we're all saying is, like, or some of you were all mentioned, or some of you were mentioning is that you don't want to replicate those old patterns that didn't serve you in your last relationship. And so sometimes what I witness when I'm, when I'm a person's therapist and or a coach, I'm saying, Hey, you didn't like that about your last marriage, your last relationship. Is that really how you want to show up in this one? And, or what Bella you're referring to is if you're not quote unquote ready, right? Like it's so easy to like look past. I mean, when I met, got to, when I got to know Bella, true, true story, a couple, you know, a year or so ago, you were telling me, I don't know. I was, had met somebody, by the way, in December, people, it can happen. And she was like, red flags, red flags. And I was like, shut up, stop it. You know, you were right. And there weren't many, I mean, but like you highlighted these things. I wasn't ready to hear, but you were right about them. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that it's important to heal your heart from a divorce or a separation, because unless you can quote unquote, attempt to heal your heart, we're never healed. Okay. We're always, always healing. We're always evolving, but attempting to heal your broken heart from the one, your past relationship. It's difficult to feel like, to go and hold like holy W, you know, H O L E Y um, into the next relationship. Is that even a word? Holy W H O L E Y. Yeah, two L's. No, two yeah. L's. That's you what know, I thought. <laughs> who cares? It can yeah. be holy moly, but you know, you, 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 you understand what I'm saying. The video editor will print it out on the screen. So Heather, what did, so did you have something to add? Yeah, well, because, you know, I, I'm fortunate. So I'm an owner in a wealth management firm. And the mission of our firm is to help people enjoy a full life. And we take that very seriously, regardless of marital status, you know, or what people are trying to achieve, what's important to them and how do we help them get there? And obviously the finances are a critical part of it, but it's just one part. And so it's very common once we get through the legal process with the attorneys like Beth and we get the finances restructured, separated, retitled. Um, you know, get the investment set up, cash flow, tax planning done. Then I, I've had this happen so many times where men or women will say, you know, thank you for getting that done. Now, can you help me find a guy or a girl to date? And that is their full life. And I mean, I've been through it personally awesome. and with so many clients because we work with our clients for 20, 30, 40 years, you know, the beyond as well as through the process. My point in bringing it up is my number one advice on that is to look at dating as learning about yourself. What do you really, really want now that you have the knowledge of a marriage and you have the financial freedom on your own? What do you want in your own, your next chapter? And there's no way somebody can get that right like the very first date or the very first time. It may or may not be the first person you date, the first relationship, but it's about learning who you are and what you want. And that just takes time. So I encourage people, to, and this was true for me, it was like my online dating profile 
evolved as I evolved post-divorce and figured out what I want. And I think that's definitely true for dating, but it's even true on the finances somewhat. People have the money messages, what they learned consciously and unconsciously about money growing up. And then they have what they learned consciously and unconsciously in their marriage about money and finances. And now they have the freedom to manage their money and to make their financial choices on their own, which is exciting and scary, but it's about being conscious and thoughtful and informed, you know, so you're making good choices and expecting particularly that first year, whether it's money, whether it's your physical transition, whether it's dating, it's just an unbelievable transition. It is still a roller coaster. Um, but if you process the emotions during the divorce, if you kind of identify the emotions, if you acknowledge them, if you get the help that you need and make thoughtful decisions, you know, that's what gets you through faster to who you want to be and the create the life you want post-divorce. Yeah. And, and that's actually, we're going to go into our best advice. The one thing we'd like to leave with those who are entering their beyond those who, um, even the people who we, we are talking to today, who may be facing divorce in their future, even those who are in the midst of it. And then those who are just about to enter their beyond or in their beyond, they're all going to get there at some point. And what are the words of hope and inspiration that you would want to leave with them as they go forward into this new year? And I'll just go around the table. So I'm going to start with that. Oh, my. Uh, focus on what, uh, it sounds so cliche, but the glass is half full. Mm -hmm. um, focus on what you do have. Um, looking back with anger, frustration, fear, on what you didn't get will leave you depleted. And um, when I say get, I mean um, emotionally, financially, legally, just what focus on what you do have. And again, it sounds um, so trite, but if you have your health, you have everything. And focusing on that alongside all the good that did come out of it, of your newfound freedom, even if it wasn't what you chose, the world is your oyster. And if you could look at it through that lens, um, life's going to feel a lot better. Again, I might speak from experience. All of these things were a big challenge. <laughs> and I'm here and I'm, I'm thriving and surviving. Mm -hmm. Again, thanks to my team. Hello, all of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I, that I love, I love, it's not trite. It is, it's the truth and we know it, right? We are, we have been through it with thousands of people. We've been yeah. through it ourselves. And what, you know, ultimately what I think you're, you said is, is this transition in life as hard as it may be, is that opportunity. It is an opportunity and that focus on what you do have and not what you don't have in all those different ways is oh so powerful at a time when it can be very easy to look at what you don't have, but there's so much power in what you do have. So I love that, Beth. Um, Jenny, where would you like to leave people? So um, the first thing that came to mind is forgiveness, is forgive yourself and then you know, forgiveness is the, is the gift we give ourselves, you know, not to others. And so it's not for other people. So I, I, I thought of three things. It's like, be forgiving of yourself because I, at least I am very hard on myself. And I think a lot of people are hard on themselves. And I think it's just something that we overlook that you should be forgiving of yourself and then of others because anger and sadness, I call them their close cousins and anger and sadness build up in our bodies. And I won't go into that lecture, but stress, you know, is a big thing and anger and sadness affects us so many people that's why anyway so forgiveness number one the second thing is um it's funny the oxygen mask thing you know be, you know you got to take care of you and be your own best friend think of all the things you say and do to yourself if any of those things you say in the mirror would you say to any of us mm. you know, sometimes I'm so mean to my own self I'm like I would never say that to my daughter I would never tell that to Beth or Bella or Heather or you know, like Susan, right? Like ask yourself, am I really my own best friend? Okay, I think it's super important. And then lastly is like, give yourself permission to have fun and be in love and like to create a new story, right? I just know like, like when I got my divorce, I was like, what is going to happen to me, my life? And I was like, no. And I really said like, I can have it all. I can be in love again. I can be happy. I can create joy. So give yourself permission. 
Oh, that makes me happy to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Heather, how about you? What What would you tell people in there beyond? Yeah, well, I would say integrity and grace. So through the process, it, to me, integrity means being educated and informed. You don't have to be an expert. You're not going to learn everything. But it is important to take the time on the finances and the legal process to understand what's possible in your case. And that's what's going to make you confident post-divorce that you did everything you could because there is so little you can control and there's definitely going to be things you're not happy with. But if you go through and you say you did your part, you did the right thing to learn what you should have learned and then to make informed conscious decisions and to be truthful, you know, with the team, with your spouse and most importantly with yourself, um, even when it's, you know, when sometimes it's just saying like I'm too angry or I'm too upset to make good decisions and taking a break. And then having grace, again, sometimes with your spouse, that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries. You always want to have good boundaries, but to have grace with your spouse, with your kids, again, with your team. And most importantly, as Jenny said, you know, with your spouse, because it is, I'm sorry, most importantly with your with yourself, because it's a really tough process. There's no way you're going to do it perfectly. But if you keep trying to have integrity and grace, you'll keep doing the right thing and be forgiving and understanding of yourself as well as others. Yeah. If you, if you can't be, I love that, that you have to be, you know, would you say that to a friend? Like if somebody said something mean to one of you guys, I'd bop them, but yeah. it's probably something I would say to myself very easily. So, um, I, I, an integrity and grace or something we yeah. all need in, in our lives and Bella, the queen of the beyond, where would you like to leave people as they go forward into that beautiful beyond? You know, no matter where you are in the process, I promise you, if you could see me in my hand, I have a little magic wand and I'm waving it because love exists for every single person that wants it. And just tell yourself it's a, when it's not an, if you mm -hmm. will find the lid to your pot and and so know that if you're coming out of divorce and you want love, know it's going to exist. Remember, think about having a plan before you just jump into the Atlantic and feel like, oh my gosh, I'm unmoored. I have no life vest on. And, and if you're at a different point and maybe you're thinking about filing divorce, maybe you're in the midst of it and the thought of dating, you can't really like wrap your head around it. The questions I like to ask myself and of my clients, and I think somebody mentioned this earlier, it's either what do I want or what would make me most happy? And when you start to write those things down, when you think about, God, what would make me happy? And you write those things down, a lot of those things end up being really easy, small things, right? Some of them are going to be big things, right? Uh, what would make me happy is a house in the mountains where I could ski every day. Okay, that's maybe on the five-year plan at this point. But think about the things that make you happy because when we do those things, and as women especially, guys, no shade on you if you're listening to this, we forget to pour into our own cups because we're so busy pouring into everybody else's cups. What brings me joy and do those things that make you happy. You will feel better about yourself. You're putting your oxygen mask on, like you guys have said, and you'll start to see little glimmers of sun, even when it feels like it's a pretty dark stormy day. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, what you just said, Bella, uh, about finding love and about, you know, being open and, and pulling together. I think what all of you said is what I was thinking is that at a time in your lives right now, listeners, where you may not feel like there's a lot of love in your life and you think that it's not a possible thing. I want you to, to think of the women or the people or the family in your life. Like I have on this screen with me right now, because you are, I promise you surrounded by so much love that you may not be recognizing in this moment where life is right. difficult and love comes in so many shapes and forms. And that's what I did today. I filled a screen with people I love and who are the most, you know, wonderful people. You have that full glass of love in your life. It may not be romantic love in this moment, but it does come in all shapes and sizes. And that's, truly one of the gifts that you will get through this entire process is 
yes, things can seem difficult, but you're also going to see just who's there for you, just who are your elevator people, Bella Gandhi. Um, for those of you who haven't seen Bella's TED Talk, I'll link to it in the show notes. It's all about your your elevator people. And, you know, so life has a lot of gifts and a lot of love for us all. And speaking of gifts, ladies, we created a few gifts for our listeners today to just wind up this special episode so that you all know, listeners, I asked each of my guests to do two things. One, to give me a list of their favorite songs, their uplifting melodies that they like to play to make themselves feel better. We all know the power of music, whether it's, you know, getting in your car like Dead to Me. I was just watching that the other day and she was playing like heavy metal in the car and screaming or, you know, dancing around to Adele. So we have a wonderful Spotify playlist for you all. I think we have over 30 songs on it. I've been listening to it all day. Uh, I guarantee you're going to feel better if you listen to this. So that that will be in the show notes. And then each of the ladies, we talked about that self-care aspect. Everybody came up with a few of their favorite self-care, self-love, supporting types of gifts from Amazon. So there's a wonderful uh, shopping list on Amazon that I'll link to as well. But I'm going to, for three very lucky listeners out there, I'm going to give away three of the items on that list just randomly. So all you have to do to win is send an email to divorceandbeyondpod at gmail.com and let us know one little go golden nugget that you took away from today's episode, um, something that helped you or something that you'd like to share with someone who is going through divorce, or just one little tidbit of your own if you have something to share. And I'll be picking three of those and giving the three gifts away on the first episode of 2023 with one of Jenny's friends who she introduced me to, Stephanie Lefevre, um, the country's number Number one dating, uh, not dating coach. That's Bella. Happiness the country's happiness number coach. one happiness coach, who's mm -hmm. going to be here to help us to start off the new year uh, with a plan and a resolution for happiness. So everybody, reach out and let us know. It's divorce and beyond pod at gmail. Send us your golden nuggets um, for starting divorce, getting through divorce, or starting that beautiful beyond. Ladies, I so appreciate all of you. I can't think of anybody I would rather spend my end of the year episode with. And I just, I appreciate all of you so very, very much. I want you to know how much I love you all and truly just appreciate all of your support for me, for the show, and for all those listeners. You've all gone way above and beyond in, uh, I think between the four of you, there's something like 15 or 16 episodes of Divorce and Beyond. So thank you for all you do. Thank you for who you are. And thank you from me. And thank you for having us. Thank you for Happy having us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy We're going to see year. you in 2023. Bye. Thanks, Susan. Bye, Bye ladies. <laughs>